Dental prophylaxis. Emphasis on prophylaxis. It is defined as the preventive treatment of a disease. The word prophylaxis originates from the Greeks, which means to guard or protect. So the whole premise of a dental prophylaxis is to prevent periodontal disease in dogs and cats, rather than just treat it. Dogs and cats are prone to periodontal disease because, not like us, they do not brush their teeth every day. For us, we are even advised to have a dental profi twice a year for the same reason, even if we do brush our teeth and rinse our mouths daily. For me, there's no use discussing a procedure without discussing the disease first. Maybe that's why my PowerPoints are so long. Anyway, let's begin. Periodontal disease could be considered as the most common health problem seen in small animal practice today. This condition is a multifaceted pathology, but the most basic definition of it is the progressive loss of dental attachment. It can be clinically manifested by the following signs, halitosis, bleeding in the gums, or even signs of petechiae, gingivitis, or the inflammation of the gums, root exposure which follows gingival recession, bone loss in severe cases, and tooth mobility and extrusion. Statistics indicate that 80% of dogs and 70% of cats will have some form of dental disease by the age of 3, with plaque buildup being the underlying cause. Multiple studies have found an association between periodontitis and systemic diseases brought about by pathologic changes in internal organs and other measures of systemic inflammation, oral infection, oral trauma, or malocclusions can also cause pain and loss of function. Periodontal disease is also considered as a multifactorial infection complex predisposed by breed, age, genetics, skull type, species, plaque, calculus, chewing, grooming habits, and the biofilm. What is a biofilm? This is a core component of the pathophysiology of periodontal disease. Let's discuss this in more detail. Periodontal disease results from the formation of a biofilm. This is a complex accumulation and organization of microbes at the gingival margins. This biofilm is what we call a plaque. Now, plaques are a natural film which coats the teeth and gingiva. However, we usually prevent it from thickening and causing gingivitis by daily tooth brushing and mouth washing. However, dogs and cats don't do that. When gingivitis occurs, the junctional epithelium becomes inflamed, causing the sulcus to mildly deepen. The tissues become edematous and infiltrated with polymorphonuclear granulocytes, in short, neutrophils. The accumulation of the supragingival biofilm reduces the oxygen available to the plaque in the sulcus. As a result, there is a transition from aerobic or facultative anaerobic to an overwhelmingly anaerobic microflora within the subgingival area. This leads to increased resistance of the microflora to antimicrobials, with this leading to continuous inflammatory response. The gingiva further deepens, and the three deepest periodontal tissues, the periodontal ligament, alveolar bone, and cementum, all risk being exposed to the disease process occurring in the tissues close to them. This virulent bacterial plaque population and the associated cytotoxin and endotoxin production can often lead to direct tissue damage. With damage to the supportive tissues, the anchor for the tooth can slowly be lost. The immune response of the host at this stage is critical. Immunocompromised animals tend to have a faster progression of the disease. 
and this part of the process happens markedly fast. As the plaque begins to age, it mineralizes and forms what we call a calculus. This adheres mainly to the buccal surfaces of the teeth, as seen in this picture on the right. While calculus in itself does not cause periodontal disease, it can allow the plaque underneath to more rapidly colonize the tooth surface. Also, when calculus is present subgingivally, proper healing is not possible. The odontal tissues experience tissue de destruction, deepening of the pocket, and further attachment loss. The junctional epithelium separates away from the tooth surface, and eventually, a periodontal pocket forms and deepens. As more effusion takes the place of the tulcus, the tissues move away from the tooth surface and the resultant space fills with calculus, necrotic cementum, and other debris. When microbes get within 0.5 millimeters of bone, it starts to resorb by osteoclastic resorption. Once approximately half of the alveolar bone is lost, the tooth becomes mobile and will be lost. Further disease progression would lead to either the maxilla or the mandible resorbing in response to the inflammatory attack by the bacteria. These bacteria can then cause bacteremia and cause more systemic diseases. The progression of periodontal disease in animals is defined by the degree of attachment loss of the tooth from its bony and soft tissue attachment. This degree are outlined by the gradations of the disease from stage 1 to 4. At stage 0 is created as a baseline for a healthy and normal periodontium. A healthy periodontium should be pink or non-inflamed, except when pigmented. It must be firmly attached to the underlying bone and with a sharp margin where the soft tissues meet the tooth. Grades 1, 2, 3, and 4. We will discuss this in more detail in the next slide. Grade 1 of periodontal disease is characterized by gingivitis due to plaque deposition and lack of home care. This is reversible by diligent home care or professional scaling and polishing. There is no attachment loss at this point. Without treatment and with an increase in quantity or virulence of bacteria, this will eventually lead to stage 2. Stage 2 or grade 2 is characterized by early attachment loss. Early disease defined by attachment loss of up to 25%. The sulcus is deepened by disease with periodontal ligament, alveolar bone crest, and the cementum all exposed to bacteria. These tissues recede away from the infection, leading directly to attachment loss. This condition may progress to grade 3, or moderate attachment loss. This is defined by the loss of attachment of 25 to 50% verified by periodontal probing and radiographs. Note that the gingival recession occurring at the same time as deepening pockets may not increase the probing depths. However, attachment loss is still significant. Severe attachment loss or grade 4 is where the loss of attachment is now at greater than 50%. If disease is generalized, Horizontal bone loss is most likely, whereas localized lesions, such as the palatal aspect of the maxillary canines, may present infrabony pockets with vertical bone loss. Staging of periodontal disease helps to make sure you are giving the correct treatment to the patient. Remember, the appearance and magnitude of the calculi deposition seen from the outside does not always reflect the loss of attachment inside the teeth. This degree of attachment loss can only be identified and measured through a process called periodontal probing. This is our next topic for the next 
for this chapter. Thank you for listening.